Joining me now, Missouri Senator Josh Hawley. Senator, the White House wants to put you in a box. If you want to spend, send money to the people of Maui, you also have to vote to send money to support the war in Ukraine. So what's your move? Uh, my move is to say that the only nation building we ought to be doing, Laura, is building this nation. And I can't believe that it's so hard for the White House when asked about, are we going to first support our citizens who are in the midst of a natural disaster and have all these needs or first prioritize the citizens of some other country, they can't just say America? Why, why is it so hard? Why is it the answer? Oh, yeah, of course, we're going to start with Americans because this is the United States of America. They seem to forget who they're serving, who they have been elected to serve. Listen, this is not hard. We should be prioritizing Americans first. We should be rebuilding this nation, and we should not be engaged in this wild nation-building endeavors overseas like Ukraine, like Afghanistan, like Iraq. These people have learned nothing. Hey there, guys. Welcome to the channel. So it looks like we might actually be finally, finally coming to an end for Mitch McConnell. And honestly, it looks like there's actually a chance that some of the old guard, neocon, warmonger, old school Republican swamp people may actually be going with him. Pack your bags, Lindsay. Bye-bye. So Josh Hawley, he has a bill that he's been trying to work through the Senate that would limit corporate giving to political campaigns from publicly held companies, which really is such a common sense measure that there is really no way any reasonable person could make any reasonable argument against it. But Mitch McConnell, he has warned the Republican caucus that anyone who would dare back Hawley's bill would be in danger of being primaried or losing their access to the mountain of cash that ironically is exactly what Holly's bill is about. And that's a freaking trashy swamp move, dude. That's bad. And and really, you know, on top of that, on top of all the swampy stuff that Mitch does, the man is just old and out of step and his brain is literally failing right before our eyes, man. And I will say this, full disclosure, I am nowhere near even close to a McConnell fan, right? I don't like the guy. I never have. I never will. I don't trust him. But all that said, I believe that he really, honestly, is responsible for maybe the one thing that could very well save our entire nation moving forward. He is the reason that our terrible, corrupt, incompetent, embarrassing excuse for an attorney general, Merrick Garland, is not right now serving a lifetime appointment to the Supreme Court. So I do thank Mitch for that. I thank very, very much. I thank him for that. But I'm absolutely glad to see that things are changing. You know, a new era of Republican people like Josh Hawley, they're actually starting to stand up to the guy. And obviously, he doesn't like it. You know, he also doesn't like, apparently, the new Speaker of the House, Mike Johnson. And more specifically, he doesn't like the things Johnson is wanting to do. Doesn't like his willingness to challenge the machine and, and literally tie Ukraine war funding to our own border protection, which truly, to any thinking person, makes perfect sense, you know. I'll help you defend your border, but at the same time, I should probably shore up mine. How that does not make sense to anyone would blow my mind, you know? So we'll have to see just how serious about war our president and Mitch McConnell really are because they proposed another $100 billion in addition, in additional aid to Ukraine. And all the new speaker has said was, sounds great. Only thing is, we're gonna have to offset the cost by cutting some of the worthless BS we're already paying for. And we're going to have to fix and protect and defend our own border as well. So go ahead, sign right here. We'll get your war restarted. It's a good deal. But Mitch doesn't think so. He's actually doing everything he can to undermine the new Speaker of the House. And the few Republicans that still have a spine are finally, finally standing up to Mitch. Critics who oppose your advocacy for Ukraine. Senator Paul said that uh, you were trying to undercut uh, the new Speaker of the House. Senator Hawley called your position a, quote, mistake. Well, let me, let me just say that, that conceptually, conceptually, Senator Schumer and I are in the same place in the sense that we view all of these problems as connected. Ukraine, is part of it. Obviously, Israel enjoys overwhelming support, but we think it's also important that we have a part related to Asia, and that's Taiwan. 
And then as several of my members have underscored, we think it's important to be, to do something credible about our own uh, border, which is basically wide open. So conceptually, I think Schumer and I are in the same place. In terms of the details, what is really needed to protect the border? Not a bunch of money going to Chicago and New York, but something seriously drafted. And we were working on that, and I think <clears throat> the Democrats will have to accept a really serious U.S.-Mexico border protection bill in order uh, to get our people on, on board for a comprehensive approach. But it seems like there's a disconnect between you and some of your Republican members, specifically on the Ukraine issue, not so much on the border. Well, I don't have to explain to you, the form that the bill takes will be determined by the majority leader. And we'll see after that whether there are amendments offered and how they turn out. I'm just speaking for myself. I think we need to address all four of those areas in a, in a credible way. Leader McConnell, Leader McConnell. What, what is your reaction to the House Speaker's Israel-only bill? Well, there, that's an opinion many people have. Uh, it's not surprising, but in order to make a law, it has to pass both bodies and be signed by the President. And we'll see uh, if the bill comes out of the House, and if so, what kind of margin it has. Um, my own view, I just expressed, is that we need to tre treat all four of these areas, all four of them, Ukraine, Israel, Taiwan, and the border. What do you say to Senator McConnell's demand to include Ukraine funding as part of the supplemental? You know, I think he's wrong. Um, I think that if you contrast it with his opinion during the debt ceiling deal, he was like sort of hands off, we've got to wait and give the House room sort of the opposite approach here, and I think that uh, the House does need to be given room. As we all saw, it's a difficult position to win the Speaker's race over there, and to win it, you got to keep your coalition together on what you do, and so I think the Speaker is smart to separate out the Israeli aid. I think he's also, frankly, smart to do the conservative thing and actually pay for it by taking money from somewhere else in the budget. So I think it's very popular with the conservative base at home, and I think the Speaker's made the right decision. And I think ultimately, if the Senate tries to send something else over there, it'll be dead on arrival. McConnell is undercutting Speaker Johnson's position. I think he's attempting to, and I think it's a mistake because it's also in defiance of most conservatives in the Republican Party. So I think uh, McConnell's position is very, very unpopular, uh, both in Kentucky, but also very, very unpopular across the United States. And I think ultimately will fail or bring down the Speaker, which I don't think is a good idea. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, so there it is. Mitch wants to do everything all at once, all together. It's all mixed. It's all connected, he says. But, you know, I think we're all intelligent enough to know that he doesn't give a shit about the border, right? But he has absolutely no problem just writing a few more checks and writing a few bad, easy to not enforce policies, as long as it means that he gets to fund wars all over the world. And really, all this is, is McConnell's way to literally strong arm the entire House of Representatives into just blindly going along with every stinking dollar that they can print to help Ukraine. You know, they could care less about the border. None of them really do care about the border. They never have. And they'll continue to not care until actual public pressure, you and me, takes over and actually demands that they care. But anyway, that's where the swamp creatures stand on the border and on the war. Uh, what do you think the tone is going to be from all their media allies? But Johnson's plan is not as standalone as advertised. In order to pay for the Israel aid, Johnson actually wants to cut $14 billion from the IRS. Fewer agents, he says. It seems odd and really unrelated to link the IRS to emergency aid for Israel. Unless you watch enough right-wing media, the IRS is one of its favorite boogeymen. Democrats, though, call this disgraceful a non-starter, offensive, a poison pill, problematic and ridiculous. But politics aside, here is the reality. The $14 billion is part of an $80 billion investment designed to ensure that the ultra-wealthy and corporations don't skip out on paying their taxes. 
tax enforcement is actually a big revenue driver for the government without raising taxes, according to the Nonpartisan Tax Foundation. It's been popular with every president since Ronald Reagan. And according to the Congressional Budget Office, which is also nonpartisan, investing in this enforcement at the $80 billion level was estimated to actually raise $200 billion in revenue over the next decade. So if you hamper those efforts, it's possible that this would end up actually costing the U.S. even more in lost revenue beyond the sticker price. Now, according to the Committee for a Responsible Federal Budget, also nonpartisan, defunding tax enforcement by $14 billion to pay for new spending, the House will actually add more than $30 billion to the debt. Yeah, man. So that, it's hard to watch. Guys, do not let the government teach your kids how to do math. Hey guys, when is this lazy talking point ever going to go away? They keep telling us that we need 80,000 IRS agents to go after the billionaires, to go after the billionaires. Don't you worry, guys. They're only to go after the billionaires. No talk about once they've actually gone after the billionaires, what they're going to be doing then. Are they just going to get fired? But None of it's true anyway. We only have 735 billionaires in the U.S. So are we to actually believe, and how many of us do believe, that it takes 109 IRS agents to make each one billionaire pay their quote-unquote fair share, right? This is just the stupidest possible narrative. I mean, the IRS, they are not gearing up to go after the people that have an army of top-shelf accountants. The IRS is gearing up and funding themselves to come after us, man, you and me. I promise you, that is for us. So, man, I mean, I am just so tired of the lazy, mindless rhetoric that these people get away with. I mean, the people, the mushy brain people that watch them, they believe this stuff, man. I see them talking on the Internet and they just, they really do believe that we need 80,000 IRS agents to go after the billionaires, the big evil billionaires. But anyway. That's where we're at, man. We are at a place where the Republicans say, sure, man, we'll fund your foreign wars. No problem. You know, I guess it's a good idea we do that, but we want to go off. We want to offset the spending and we want to protect our border, which is about 50 years overdue for real serious protection. I mean, and that's the problem, you know, for the powerful, you know, they're losing their minds because they're just so used to weak old, lazy, neocon Republicans that just do whatever the machine says. Well, I mean, fingers crossed, but it's looking like those days might be changing. But anyway, guys, that's just my take. Let me know yours in the comments. And if you haven't already, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Most importantly, share the channel. And we'll see you in the next one.